Hey, what's going on you guys? Kevin here in the Humble Garage. I apologize, the garage is an absolute mess. You're going to hear me say that every single video until I move and get the garage set back up. The flooring is torn out, I got bags to donate, uh, bags of clothes back there to donate. But anyway, this is basically a part two or an updated version of a video I posted a while back. It was a driving vlog on the five things that I love about my Mark 7 GTI. It is a 2017 certified pre-owned. Uh, bought it with, I want to say, Oh, 16, no, 13,000 miles on it. She's got uh, just over 20 now. It is already stage two, catalyst downpipe, tune, a uh, bunch of air intake mods, turbo inlet pipe, DSG flash, uh, gonna be IS38 turbo swapping and getting an intercooler in the near future. Also getting air ride eventually to, you know, air it out. It's always a good, good time. Uh, wheels and tires on there. I have videos on everything I've done on this vehicle thus far. So if you're looking at getting a GTI or you already own one, and you'd like step-by-step -step tutorials and instructions on how to work on your Mark 7 GTI, please subscribe, shove the thumb right up where the sun don't shine, and uh, tally whack that notification bell. love about this car is the versatility it being a hatchback there is so much room in the back here when you fold it down um, I, I run a mobile auto detailing business on the side I put my pressure washer in there steam cleaning equipment all my chemicals my buffer no issues whatsoever I also live a very outdoors lifestyle so you can get a roof rack for a kayak you can fold the seats down throw three mountain bikes in there fold the seats down, push the front seats forward, and actually put an air mattress or a bedroll in there and camp or sleep inside of this vehicle. Uh, I have a separate video, I'll have a link in the description, as to why this is the best utility vehicle. You, there's no need for an SUV when this is the sportiest of utility vehicles. Number two would be the price to performance in this vehicle. I can't really think of another vehicle out there that for a $600 software flash, which you can flash back to stock if you need to bring it in for any warranty or factory stuff done. I mean, my warranty's dead and gone because of my bolt-ons, but <laughs> story for another day. If you just want to do a tune alone, now, first of all, the stock numbers on these Mark 7 GTIs are actually sandbagged from the factory. They claim about uh, 220 to the crank, when really people are dynoing these at around 230 horsepower and around 250, 260 torque to the wheels. That's very good for a car that isn't that heavy. It's around the 3,100 pound range uh, due to all the you know safety features and well, it's got pretty much Audi functionality. It's basically the same engine and transmission as an Audi A3. If you have a Golf R, it's got the same components as an Audi S3. Now, with just a $600 tune alone, a good tune like APR, you're looking at about 316 horsepower wheel and the 350, 360 torque range. That's extremely fast for just a software tune alone. I can't really think of any other vehicles that you can get that out of. Uh, I, two cars ago, I had a 2012 Civic Si. I spent a ton of money putting bolt-ons into that. It was pro-tuned via data logging by eTuner. And I was only getting about 230 horsepower uh, to the wheels after all the mods I did because it was still naturally aspirated. So a turbocharger, Definitely the way to go because you stay out of boost, you keep the RPMs low, you're still getting good fuel economy, but when you roll into boost, it throws you in the seat, you get all that power, all that torque, all that thrust, so to speak, top gun. So yeah, just absolutely amazing. All right, the next thing would be all the standard features for at least the, the model year 2017. You're getting a lot of features that are technically options on a lot of other vehicles, but some of the ones that I really appreciate is a very high definition backup camera, and it's also hidden underneath a little awning or covering that folds out when you shift into reverse, so it's never dirty or fogged up or anything. Really fantastic. Really good infotainment system, extremely reactive, very crisp resolution, just like using a cell phone, very nice. You also have uh, LED turn signals on the mirrors. All the interior lights are LED. Really good audio system. I don't even have the upgraded Fender audio system. I have the standard one and it sounds phenomenal. I'd say it sounds on par, if not better, than the uh, Harman Kardon audio system I had in my 2013 Mercedes C300 Maria. 
She is on the channel. If you're interested in that as well, I have some videos of that. That was my previous vehicle that I actually traded in towards this GTI. I'd have to say number four would be how good of a daily driver this bad boy is. So the exhaust system I have on here, I have a catalyst downpipe and a resonator delete, but I have these stock mufflers still in place, which means if I'm just cruising along, it sounds stock. There's no drone. You can't even tell it's been modified. But when you get on it, you, when you're on the pipe, you get a lot of a lot of deep, crisp sound. Doesn't sound ricey. It sounds well like a European vehicle. It sounds very uh, deep and raspy, and ooh, sounds good. Uh, so very nice. Also extremely comfortable. Has all the creature comforts you need for a daily driver. If you're not getting into boost, very good gas mileage. Uh, granted, when you get a tune that has like crackles and pops, uh, that leaves unburned fuel in the uh, basically the combustion loop. So. Technically, your your gas mileage is going to go down. Some tunes allow you to put into a different drive mode, and it turns that feature off because that does make a substantial difference on your miles per gallon. All right, and last but not least, I would have to say it's the Volkswagen community. So when you go to Cars and Coffee, you uh, join an online Facebook group or something like that, uh, there is a huge community around Volkswagens. You could say the same thing around the Subaru community with the WRXs. Uh, it's a very tight-knit community. Not a lot of hatred between different generations or different, if you have a Jetta or a, um, a Golf R or a Golf GTI or uh, a 1960s Beetle or Bus or Carmen Ghia. If you have a VW or an Audi, uh, technically there's a huge like family community there and there's even meets. I'll have a picture here on the screen. I'm going to an event tomorrow. It's a cruise with classic VWs, but obviously all many makes and uh, models are welcome. And it's just a great time. So I feel like the community around it is very positive, very uplifting, not a lot of negativity around it, which is uh, really cool. So I'm sure there's a hundred more things I could go over about what I love about this vehicle. Um, for example, the stock suspension and brakes are phenomenal. Uh, great weekend warrior, take it on the track, then daily drive it. It's got uh, tie downs for two child seats in the back if you happen to have snot machines. Um, if you run a small business like I do and you're, you're mobile, you come to people, fold the seats down, put your gear in there, you can do a little bit of everything with this vehicle. So if you can only own one vehicle, this puts a check in all the boxes. Sporty, fun, practical. It just, it's a great car. All right, guys. Peace.